Okay, so we looked at um, a few examples of ways you can approach simulating uh, natural phenomenon with P5.js. Um, there's more code examples that don't have videos here just because um, of time, you know, there's a lot of details, but I think they really just kind of build on some of the things that we've talked about. I wanted to um, do the last video for this section and just show you some examples of two simulations that I've made with P5.js um, that might give you ideas of how to approach this. The first is this snowflake generator. Now it keeps freezing for some reason. I'm not sure, maybe there's too much going on with me recording, um, but um, when we're not gonna go through all the details of all of the code here, but I wanted to show you a couple examples. So um, this creates this random snowflake simulator. Right now we have as many as 500 snowflakes and um, I'm using object-oriented programming for this. So if you need a refresher on this, you might wanna check out some of the Creative Programming One videos on that. I'll put a link here for that. Um, but basically you can see there's a lot of settings for these. So I have a snowflake class that includes the number of points, the radii of both the outside and inside, the speed that it can fall. Um, these do this kind of nice wiggle, sort of like a real snowflake how many points, um, its position, the speeds are all randomized. They also rotate, as you can see here. Um, and then they have this update function that, um, and, and a lot of this is um, vectors, like we talked about in some of the other videos here. Um, so it's speed and rotation all kind of change based on other parameters. So the quicker it's falling, the quicker it spins. Um, we've got the wiggling going on here. And then the display, which really is just drawing this snowflake shape. And then I also have a wind class. And um, this is where things get really fun. You can have a bunch of snowflakes and this is cool, but you can create these other systems inside this bigger system that all affect each other. So the wind um, is based on Perlin noise and it's um, got sort of these rates here and it creates these forces. Now there's nothing to be visualized with the wind, but when I update my snowflake, I pass in the wind variable and it changes it based on how these things are moving around, which is pretty fun. And then my draw loop is actually really simple. I'm just updating the wind, um, updating all the snowflakes based on that wind variable, um, and then displaying them. And then the last thing I'm doing is seeing if they've reached the bottom of the screen, then I'm removing that from the list and creating a new snowflake in its place that starts at the top. And that way this thing just kind of keeps going forever. Um, I will tell you, I spent a long time making this. It was obsessive and way too much fun. Um, but the key kind of takeaway for me was it's all about tuning variables. It's all about playing with settings, seeing what looks right, changing things a little bit, and also thinking, I could add this, I could add this, I could add this. Um, and there's so many things here I would love to add. Um, maybe a good place to start would be, could you have the snowflakes pile up at the bottom, creating these kind of snow drifts? Um, that could be really cool. Lots of other things I'm sure you could think about adding here. Um, so give me a sec, let's, uh, I'm gonna queue up the other one for us to look at. This is um, sort of like a fungus simulator. And um, I just need to restart browser sync. This is the one downside of browser sync. It's hard to have more than one thing open. Okay, uh, that is really hard to see, I think perhaps on your video. Let's see if I could just quickly change the stroke weight. Hang on gang, sorry, I should have done this before. Stroke weight. Is that a little better? That's a little better, okay. So this is this um, thing loosely inspired by fungal growth and especially, um, uh, yeah, like those, those fungus, fungi that kind of grow across the floor of the, of the forest. And um, this works very similarly to the previous example. I've got a class uh, called fungus, but in this case, each fungus is really just a line segment that then connects to a bunch of others. Um, one other key thing here is I'm actually not drawing the background in draw. I draw it once up in setup and then never again. And um, the reason is then it keeps accumulating. So it keeps adding new things and I don't have to redraw the fungus every time. Um, so in this case, they kind of grow in random directions. And when they um, move or split, they do so at this particular angle or a random value within that angle. 
And again, there's some vector math going on here and a bunch of different settings um, that I spent quite a bit of time playing with. Um, same idea here too. We go through each one of the fungi um, in our class, we update it. Um, and then if it gets too close to the edge, you see how they kind of conform to this circle. If they're within um, too far within that radius, they um, stop. Or if they get too old, then this branch sort of dies out and stops. And you can see some of that over here. Um, if I hit a keyboard key, it will uh, reset. If I hit P, it'll pause. And I found this to be really helpful in debugging this because it allowed me to um, see kind of what was going on step by step. And oh, and then the other thing is it does tend to slow down if there's too many of these um, dudes on the screen. And so if the frame rate gets too low, under 30 frames per second, it just resets itself automatically. And um, yeah, similar to the Snowflake simulator, I'm like really obsessed with this. I spent a really long time sort of playing with the parameters. Um, you know, we could, for example, change the angle at which it splits and you get this really different result. This almost feels like crystals growing. Um, it fills the space in a really different way. If we make that smaller, it's going to be much, much tighter and linear. Um, this is almost like ice or something. And so you can see just changing one variable within the system is really going to change the results. Um, same thing with you know, the chance of splitting. We can make it much, much greater. So it does this, you know, it's going to freak out. Maybe we can make that. Um, I have found with these things, often it gets really sensitive to the variables that you put in. So that would also be something you might want to experiment with. Um, but again, I just wanted to show you two examples of the kinds of simulators you might make with P5JS. Of course, you could also make little creatures. You could, I mean, there's so many different things. And um, if you check the assignment for this project, you'll find some other examples maybe to sort of get your brain going on stuff.